Welcome to The Miracle You, guiding you on the journey towards finding passion and purpose and how to discover, create, and live a life by your design. Whether your success has been plentiful or your missed opportunities have been overwhelming, we can help you become a more empowered, masterful person and show you how to share your gift with the world. It's time to inspire change from within with the host of The Miracle You, Vince Kramer. Hello, Imagination. I'm Vince Kramer, your host, and welcome to The Miracle You, where you learn about the magic of living your life by finding the example in real life. Quantum physics tells us that we are the creators of our reality. As the observer, we use our beliefs and our ego to look at the circumstances in life and develop a perception. And then that perception usually, because it came from our beliefs, usually supports our beliefs and then they become stronger and stronger. Today's guest is going to talk about three pretty big wake-up calls that she had to really help her understand that it's an inside job. The shift has to come on the inside for you to experience life in the way that you want to experience it. She talks about one of the biggest things that keeps us back, and you can find that in a lot of Imagine Miracles materials, is that we don't really know what we want. We can tell you what we don't want, or we can give you a broad spectrum of what we think we're supposed to want, but we really don't know what we want. And that also is an inside job. For you to be loved by people or have the ability to love other people, you must love yourself. For you to understand other people, you must understand yourself. To have compassion, to have empathy, you must have compassion and empathy for yourself. It's truly an inside job. And today's guest is going to share how to make that shift happen. I'm with Kathy Zeringer today. Kathy is an empowerment coach for her company, A Shift Happens. Kathy loves working with frustrated individuals who are tired of living someone else's version of success and are ready to shift to create a vision that inspires them and also gives them a life that empowers them. She has walked this path firsthand by leaving the corporate world over 15 years ago and building a life that she truly loves. Kathy also lives her passion for positive and empowering shift in the Colorado Springs community through working with community building groups such as Pike Peak Startup, the Thrive Network, and the organization of Westside Neighborhoods to inspire and empower agents of growth and change in our community. Kathy, are you ready to share the miracle of you with the imagination? Yes, I am, Vince. Happy to be here. Oh, it's so good to have you. Very rarely do I get the opportunity to to interview a, a real true friend. And our friendship has has been over the last 10 years. And, and Kathy does bring so much the, to the community and so much to the world. Could you share a little bit about your expertise, Kathy? Well, I sort of came out of a about 40 years of a wonderful life, but an overachiever's life, sort of living my life from the outside in, Vince, and had a series of wake-up calls, which I think you'll ask me about later, but essentially, um, it I was inspired to leave the corporate world and start to really connect within myself to decide where I wanted to contribute in my life going forward. And that has just led me on a, what I would call a magical mystery tour of um, wonderful opportunities and areas to stretch and find new parts of myself that I had kind of forgotten was there. And so what I love to do is to support people who feel kind of stuck and they know they can't stay where they're at, but they don't know how to move forward. And I support them through coaching and shifting perspectives to take new actions, to embrace new beliefs and new empowering perspectives, hence a shift happens, so that they can move forward powerfully in their life as I was inspired to do. 
Thanks. I, I really appreciate that. I also know that right now you're one of the most important things for, for everybody in the world, but I really want the imagination to know and understand is that this is a process and a journey and we continue to grow and we continue to uncover talents and gifts and learn even more. I know right now you're going through some sort of a certification. Could you share a little bit about that with us? Yeah. So a lot of my coaching is around actually getting in touch with your authentic wisdom as you do in a very, in a very structured manner because we have sort of been programmed away from trusting ourselves. And um, so that's been a lot of sort of emotional education, looking at belief systems, looking what gets in the way. And the latest sort of possibility that I've been invited to embrace is with a fellow coach that trained with my mentor, Debbie Ford, back in the early 2000s. And he took a a whole series of um, uh, knowledge and studies and combined it to create something called Zero Pain Now. And it's a method to address chronic pain by understanding the true cause, which is actually suppressed emotions. And getting to that and understanding that many times people have five, six back surgeries and get no relief from the pain because there is something called a diversionary pain syndrome. And essentially what we do is when we have an emotion that isn't in alignment with who we see ourselves to be, and for most of that's us, that's anger and rage, and all of us have it. And, and it doesn't let, mean that you need to stop and have a temper tantrum. You just need to bring it into your awareness. Say, what am I feeling now? I'm feeling enraged. And as you do that, you give your unconscious mind permission not to have to suppress it. Because when it suppresses it, it basically deprives oxygen from the place where usually where you've had some type of injury. And, um, and that produces pain and chronic pain, real pain. And it's, it's a, a whole different type of coaching that actually has been proven with the study with Mayo Clinic, with 100% success rate, to um, eliminate chronic pain over 30 days. Wow, that's uh, pretty impressive. And it, it's very important to understand that uh, these emotions are, are really a communication system and our bodies also talking to us too with this pain to tell us that, you know, we're holding on to something that is not going to be good for us in the long run. There, there's going to be some kind of disease, disease coming from that somewhere down the road if we don't deal with it. So that work is so powerful and I'm so excited that you're, you're diving into it. Uh, When I was doing some research, Kathy, before our call, I came across a a statement on your webpage, and it it really just magnifies what most of us are experiencing. So I'd like to read it, and then I would like you to comment on it a little bit and tell us, you know, how you took steps away from this. So it, it says, I was all about getting there wherever there was at the moment, from graduating from high school and college at the top of my class, earning a master's degree in business while working full-time, marrying a wonderful man, having two beautiful kids, earning a six-figure income, and being named the first female vice president of my company. Those were all theirs. Can you, can you really you know, just expand on it a little bit and then tell us how you took the steps to to find your now instead of being there it was an interesting process and i you know I, I'm, I'm a spiritual person as you are too and i believe in god or a higher power and i i really call it kind of god crumbs Vince, honestly because honestly um i'm a baby of eight so i always felt that um I was always running to catch up with my people, first my brothers and sisters, and then I was the youngest in my class. And so I always wanted to sort of excel to fit in. And that was the getting there. And I thought, you know, oh, if I, you know, graduate at the top of my class, then I'm, you know, then I'll feel that sense of acceptance. And I always, as I sort of said, sort of lived it from the outside. And I thought if I got an award or somebody gave me a title that that somehow would create the peace within and the freedom within to some to create 
I think what we're all after is sort of that sense of peace, that sense of contentment, and that sense of just guidance and meaningfulness. And and what I found is it was an empty an empty tunnel, you know, it, it would, it was a never ending cycle that I was always looking for the next thing. Because when I got to there, I, um, I was still not feeling that. And what I learned Vince in the process is I started doing small things like gratitude journaling. And, um, and that started, I started to notice what was right in my life. And that opened up a world to me. I took my husband, I, you know, for the first 15 years of our marriage, he thought he was responsible for my happiness. And I thought he was too. (laughs) But how can a man, you know, honestly make you happy if you don't know what makes you happy? He was, he was flying blind. And so that was a beautiful gift that, you know, that all of a sudden I had this realization and and Tom, my husband, was wonderful about that because he says, well, how can I give you the gift of time? Sort of spend time journaling and exploring to see what does, you know, bring you joy and make you happy. Um, I finally realized I was offered a promotion. Uh, my boss was leaving. I was offered a promotion to take over a $50 million division. And I, I said, no, because I realized, you know, essentially... I said my family was a priority, but I was at work at eight o'clock at night. And so I said no to that and started saying yes to myself. And I was able to leave the corporate world in a way that empowered me. And I had a mantra I used at that time because I'd been such a control freak. It's like if I could sort of control things, which I really couldn't control, which was making me very stressed and again, living outside of myself, I just said to myself as I was working through this, let go, let God, let him show me the path. And that's what happened. So did I answer your question? <laughs> no, you, you certainly did. And and as you opened yourself up to more joy, opened yourself up to more freedom, uh, opened yourself to belonging, uh, you know, we kind of step into our divine intent or or what our mission is in life. What would you say in this now, because I know our mission is constantly expanding, but in this now, what's your mission and how are you living it? It's it's something that connection. I support people. I love helping people sort of connect within to something, maybe creating an aha moment. And then taking that and seeing how they can start to connect with other like-minded people in some ways. So I love connecting people within the community when they're passionate about something, if somebody hasn't found really what makes them tick, then I love to support them in in questioning and, and understanding what is it that you really are after. And that always starts as we know Vince with me continually connecting within myself and saying, okay, you know, what, what is inspiring me? What is calling to me now? You know, it's definitely an inside yeah. job. And, and when we do our work on the inside, we're the example for others to to at least think about taking that step in themselves. Give us one unique tip on, on how to really start to get to know us from the inside out. For me, it was the sense of what do I love to do? And creating sort of a vision and creating time, just small amounts of time for just little things that I love to do because I had been so ultra responsible to everyone else that I had not taken responsibility for myself and feeding myself so that I could truly feed other people as opposed to, as I sometimes call it, sort of mailing it in, checking the boxes. And so it's, it's just saying, what do I love to do and how can I do that today? Just one small thing it might be just sitting down and petting the dogs and loving on them and throwing a toy for them. It might be taking a walk with my husband, Tom. It might be making a call to a friend that I haven't talked to in a long time, but it's something that just allows me again to connect and stay present within so that I don't go because it's very easy in this world, right? To constantly be called by tasks and things. And, you know, I, 
I'm, I'm a doer. I mean, I'm never going to take that out of my life. I've just tried to dial it back. And that's one of the ways that I do it is just start to, we're so good at saying what, what we don't want in our lives. So just turn that question around and say, well, what do you want in lieu of that? And there's, there's so many things in our lives that we're good at that uh, we enjoy doing. And it, and it doesn't necessarily have to look a certain way, everyone. It can look your way. That's the most important thing is it's got to be your way. Uh, uh, playing with the dogs or a nice leisurely walk works for Kathy very well. Yeah. Um, other people, it, it might be just diving into their work in a certain way. So it, it, it's your way. Don't. Don't feel like you you have to follow these rules of society. Find your way to do it. And and Kathy's a great example of that. And I'd like to add, Vince, that, you know, I think that we forget. I've worked with a lot of people and it's like I they have not thought what they want in their lives. They've thought a lot about what they don't want. They don't want to work when they're 75. But to actually go back and one of um, one of my friends in the community left a corporate job and now he runs a corporate, it's a, a social impact for Springs Rescue Mission. And in doing that, he also has a lot of old corporate friends call him. And we've talked about starting a consultancy for baby boomers like ourselves. And he says, the first thing I tell them, because Sometimes they work so long and so hard till they're so burnt out that their health, as you said, has given out or they've given up on life in some way and they go move off into a ranch in uh, Montana. So he tries to get them before then and then he says, just dream big. If you dreamed big, if you imagined your life the way you imagined it when you were 17 or 18, what would that look like? And then I like to say also go test drive it, you know, because sometimes we think that's what it is, but we got to get to the heart of, is this what I thought it would be? And how, how can I enhance that and add to it and continue to create possibilities? Like we like to share in Imagine Miracles, you're really just, if you're not careful, stepping out of one set of rules into another set of rules and, and they're not your rules. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, until, and until you find your rules, that flow is not necessarily going to be there. I, I know, you know, one of the things that we talk about in, in Imagine Miracles, Kathy, as you know, is is wake up calls and and little sometimes voices that get us started, and sometimes some really big slap upsides <laughs> the head. Could, could you share your big wake up call with the imagination? Well. There- there were several, as I said, at first was leaving the corporate world because I really had a series of, of belief systems that I told myself. Um, and the final one that sort of inspired me to leave the corporate world was when my husband and I were talking about uh, me leaving. And I said, I can't afford to leave. This family can't afford for me to leave a six figure job. And his response was, this family can't afford for you to stay. And just those simple words gave me the confidence to know he was absolutely right because no amount of financial wealth is going to create that. So in leaving the corporate world, you have this title and you have this salary and then you have nothing. And so that was the first sort of wake up call. Who am I if I'm not vice president of operations? And that was a neat thing to allow to be open and to sort of emerge over the next three to four years. And that's when I was really called to coaching because one of the things with, with me in the corporate world is I always had people lined up outside of my office to process problems. And so it was a natural fit to do coaching. And then I learned through starting to read books and that true coaching isn't telling people what to do. It's guiding them to their own answers. And that was extremely powerful. The next wake up call came uh, because one of the things that I love to do is invest in real estate. Uh, I was raised in a real estate family. And so we, the one, one of the things that emerged as a next career was to do real estate investment. And we did that boldly. <laughs> 
and we went big into North Carolina on the on um, in Wilmington on the on the coastal waterways and on the beach, places that I couldn't invest in California. And then 2008 came along, and we looked at it, houses that were worth quite a bit on paper go to being worth. Uh, about a quarter of that. And uh, that had a substantial impact on our net worth, you know, sort of how we viewed ourselves financially. And that was a real breaking open because it, when you sort of say, who am I if I don't have this much in the bank account and uh, I ha I'm struggling with these houses. And so we had to sort of face that because the way 2008 unfolded, uh, it was not something that you could just ignore. And we did. And my husband and I sort of established a mantra that got us through it as we were negotiating with the banks and different things of debt free. We're going to be debt free and the freedom of that. And we came out the other side just feeling so much more abundant and so much more alive than we ever did with having a much higher net worth on paper. So that was really. Um, rich for us in many ways. Um, pardon my pun. And then <laughs> the final thing was, and this probably was a little bit concurrent with the financial, was that I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I'd lost my mom to brain cancer. And I had always sort of related more to my father, who was sort of this strong, you know, bread earner type of person. My mom was a support person. And I didn't, I thought weak people have got cancer. <laughs> Hello. And so I really had a breaking open in terms of, uh, I lost my mom when I was 19, of just really embracing uh, that it's okay to ask for help. And it's okay to be weak. And, and that sometimes admitting that gives you the true strength you need. And in doing that, it, it helped me to partner with my doctors. I brought in some homeopathic things, brought in, you know, Western medical. And really, my mantra at that point in time was, as I saw a doctor, it's like, how can I be empowered in this situation? I did not want to leave their office with some, basically some type of cure where I call it the three o'clock rule, 3 a.m., where I wake up in three 3 a.m. in the morning and I'm feeling uncertain and I have to wait three weeks for a doctor's appointment. I, I took my own care in, in my own hands and created a partnership with my doctors and um, I've been uh, cancer-free since that time in 2010. So I feel phenomenally blessed. Awesome. And being cancer free is is a very positive wake up call also. How how has being cancer free helped you in sharing yourself with the world? I think it's what it what it basically told you know taught me, which it seems like it's such an easy lesson, is there's no dress rehearsal. Go live, go live now and put yourself out there. And put yourself out there in ways that you would never consider before. So I started doing public speaking, got involved with a group that was just starting up that was bringing local businesses in. It was called One Million Cups. And the, and the mantra was basically what would be possible if one million entrepreneurs shared their stories once a week. And, and it was just a beautiful collaboration where I started to notice where in the corporate world, it was always like it, there was a limited amount. There wasn't enough to go around. I walked into One Million Cups and it was like, how do we grow the pie? How do we grow our community so that there's more than enough for everyone? Help me, help you, help me. And those types of things just started to really ignite me. And so I do a lot of coaching and work with, uh, with entrepreneurs on their uh, pitches for Peak Startup and hosted Peak Startups uh, pitch night and different things and just found myself in this beautiful community in Colorado Springs that I never even knew existed when I was so preoccupied with my corporate career. So that, that I think another um, mentor had shared with me, I was um, Samara that, you know, 
when I was talking to her a year out, I was going to go get all my blood tests and everything from my cancer diagnosis. She said, always just ask yourself, what is the state of your body, mind, and spirit in which cancer cannot exist? And I love that, you know, when I, there's, whenever, because, and you, there's no guarantees, Vince, as we well know. I mean, you just lost your dear father. And so if that journey comes again, then it's a journey and it's something to teach me. And, and that's what I love about this journey is that what I would have run from just screaming 20 years ago is now what I embrace because, Oh, what's in here? What can I learn about myself? And go. And it's a very empowered place to come from. And it's a great segue into the next segment that I want to share with you. And as you know, our definition of miracles through an act of love, sharing your gifts and talents with the world so others can share theirs. How are you bringing the miracle of Kathy Zeringer to the world? <laughs> well, I think uh, sort of what we just talked about. I participate fully in my community and I love to coach people. So essentially I, I Vince, um, gosh, there's so many places that that's my challenge sometimes, but essentially I, I love to work with entrepreneurs and help them to sort of be accountable to their dreams, but also be realistic quote unquote, because <laughs> we're always told to be realistic, right? And to take that, to take those baby steps to test drive. And so I, I, I do a lot of work mentoring with entrepreneurs uh, through my coaching and even through, it's kind of funny, but Mary, your, your wife introduced me to Airbnb and we've become kind of Tom and I have become Airbnb ministers, <laughs> And we love to share our community, both in our house and with a cottage we recently built, with visitors. And then the cottage has also become a place to sort of share that gift of me because people are fascinated with the concept that we have around the cottage. We call it the Z bungalow. And it's we have a rather large house and we love the neighborhood we live in and we want to age in community. And Colorado Springs is very age-friendly community and sort of building that vision. And I'm part of building that vision. I've been part of co-creators and, and now there's Colorado Springs comprehensive plan. And one thing is how do you create a, a community in which it's called eight and 80. It's good for an eight year old and it's good for an 80 year old. And we our cottage is one of those models. We just had somebody over a good friend whose mom is visiting is moving here and um, she needed to sort of get an idea of what she could do moving here from Washington. And she came and she sort of had this puzzled look like, why am I here? And when she left, she said, thank you for showing me what's possible. Thank you for showing me this vision because now I can see and send all the pictures you can. And, and now she knows how she can, you know, come here and create her vision of aging in this community near her daughter and her granddaughter. So it's those kind of things. I just participate where I feel inspired. I mentioned in my bio, the organization West Side Neighbors, that's, we're kind of West Siders here. We're West of I-25. And sometimes we get forgotten by downtown, as I'm sure you do over on the East Side. And so we're just sort of developing our own um, eclectic identity and having fun with it and building neighborhoods and building communities. So all that information is so good for everybody in the imagination. But for those of you in the Colorado Springs area, take note of what Kathy's sharing with you, because um, she's really delving into the community. And I think each and every one of us should look at how can we delve into our individual communities and how can we bring more of the, the young and the old, the middle all together to, to really create something. Kathy. Yeah, I, I, I call it, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, I call it just the intergenerational community because I like being knocked around by the millennials. <laughs> <laughs> they challenge my belief systems. They challenge in, uh, different things and I challenge them. So it's, it's been fun. 
Well, I'm going to challenge you today, too, a little bit here. <laughs> Several times you mentioned mantra throughout our discussion. And as we're starting to wind down here, as you know, the collective energy of any group is, is much more powerful than us as individuals. How can we bring the imagination energy together to help you in a mantra that you're going to share with the group right now to help you move forward? Oh, my mantra right now. Hmm. Trusting myself and connecting with others. Just, con you know, continuing to reach, continuing to reach. I'm approaching my 60th birthday and it's, it, the, the world is my oyster still. Most people think you're all dried up, but I, I'd say continue to reach, continue to reach. So all the power of the imagination is coming together to help you in the mantra, continuing to reach. Believe it or not, we've we've been going at this for quite a long time, and and I'm sometimes sorry I chose to have such a short podcast, but that's good. <laughs> uh, could you give us a, a parting piece of guidance, something that will help? each and every individual of the imagination taking their next step towards continuing to reach? Yeah, I, I, uh, when I was thinking about this interview and talking with you, I just was drawn back to Marianne Williamson's uh, quote, infamous quote, and a portion of it that I think all of us need to remember is that we were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in each and every one of us. So make manifest your glory and let it be revealed to you. Learn to trust yourself. Let it be revealed to you. You're not, it's not in everybody else. If you see it in someone else, you got it. And it's just waiting to be, to be unwrapped by you. So go do that. And as you do that, then you will give other people permission to do the same. A very powerful statement, Kathy. If you see it in someone else then that's who you are. So be advised that there are so many mirrors for you in your life, showing you who you are, showing you what your capabilities are. Kathy, how can people get in touch with you? Get, shoot me an email. I'd love to offer just a 20 minute session where we could talk about a challenge or something that's going on in your life at Kathy at a shift happens.com. And then we'll set up an appointment and have a talk. And then I'd also like to send you, as old school as it sounds, a CD of something called The Gold is in the Dark. Because as Vince mentioned, if you spot it, you got it. And my mentor, Debbie Ford, did a short talk about really embracing these challenges and knowing that that's where many of your gifts will come from. So generous, Kathy. Thank you very much. And as everyone knows, all that information will show up on the show page. So you just go to the AmericaU.com and that information will be there. Kathy, thank you so much for joining us today. On behalf of Mary and myself, we want to wish you a miracle day. You've completed this episode of The Miracle You, but we have plenty more to help you discover your own personal passion and purpose. Head over to TheMiracleU.com for free resources to assist you on your journey, as well as register for our free webinar, Discover Your Miracle Life, Three Mind Awakening Steps Toward Your Unique Purpose, or apply for a one-on-one -on -one Your Life, Your Way breakthrough session and discover your next best step on your journey. All available exclusively on our website. That's TheMiracleU.com. We look forward to sharing more experiences of passion, purpose, and life by design next time, right here on The Miracle You.